I recently put liquid metal onto my Steam Deck and it helped the temperatures out tremendously. But as many of you in the comments pointed out, there's a little bit of a risk that's inherent in liquid metal. So how do we actually solve the problem of the Steam Deck being hot and loud by replacing it easily without having a whole huge mess that you might have to deal with? And that's where today's video sponsor comes in. These are the Frost Sheet Thermal Pads and we're gonna be putting them on the Steam Deck to actually see, can we improve what the Steam Deck has going on? Likely not gonna make it better than liquid metal, but it's gonna be safer, it's gonna be easier, and it's gonna last a lot longer. So just a couple things before we get into it. Frost Sheet actually put two pads in each box for me to save on the shipping cost. So this is not something you should expect if you're seeing it, only expect one pad in each box. Also, additionally, they've come down to the price of only being $29 a box. And the first hundred of you that use our link in the video description and use the discount code ufd frostsheet 10 you'll save $10 off your first order with them, helping to bring that price down. So again, only one per box, but that's all you're ever gonna need for your CPU, your GPU, whatever you happen to Steam Deck you're putting it on, but also you can get $10 off, pretty good deal. Check it out at the link in the video description. Now let's get back to the video. Also, I had to shave off my hair for a charity thing. So thermal pads are great because they allow you to reuse what you actually put on your CPU or GPU die, but you can also get better cooling than some thermal paste that are out there. And what we have here is the frost sheet setup. So this comes in a variety of sizes and we have the handling instructions I don't think I'm supposed to handle it with my raw hands. Yeah, bare hands, uh, use proper hand gloves, uh, avoid placing the product inside the mouth, and don't eat or drink while working with the product. I probably am not the guy to actually abide by that, but you can see right here, we actually have these small little thermal pads in here, which are gonna fit perfectly on the SOC that's on the Steam Deck. However, you can also get it in larger sizes in case you wanna put it on something like your CPU die. Or since they sell it in 38 millimeters by 38 millimeters, you can actually even put them on GPU dies, allowing you to get better thermal conductivity, less hassle, less mess, and these are actually gonna perform really well. So Frost Sheet has actually put a lot of research and development into these graphene thermal pads, and we should see some great thermal improvements from the traditional Steam Deck cooler because we're just putting on a graphene thermal pad. So I busted out my screwdriver because I thought I was gonna have to like, unscrew my Steam Deck, and I should have just known this is my Steam Deck and I never screwed it back together. Oh yeah, pop open the Steam Deck. Now we need to get into the backside so that we can actually put the thermal pad onto the actual SOC that's in here. This LTT store screwdriver, so satisfying. So we've already shown you the tutorial on how to disassemble the Steam Deck so that you can actually do things uh, with the actual die to cool it, to change all of that. And it's pretty easy. It's just three screws onto this heat sink and then it comes off. But we can take a look here quickly because one of the things that people were saying about my liquid metal application was that we were gonna have spread and that we were at risk of it going over and under the tape, making it so that it made a mess. And we can kind of see that the liquid metal actually did go outside of the SOC, which is a problem because liquid metal is highly conductive and can short out the components that are on the Steam Deck. Also, another risk that liquid metal has that the graphene pads will eliminate is the fact that the liquid metal is actually highly reactive. And what we're gonna find when we clean it off of this heat sink is that it did bond to the copper on this heatsink because the gallium alloy just likes to react with things. On aluminum, it eats it alive. On copper, it fuses with it over time. So you would have to replace this and come back time and time again over the life of a Steam Deck and continuously reapply the liquid metal and the graphene pad eliminates all of that. We put it on here and then we can reuse it if we get a Steam Deck too. You can just slap it on there. So I need something to clean up my liquid metal. Oh yeah, this is just, this is a pain in the butt to clean off. It's gonna take a long time. And again, I'll show you. The graphene pad, you just put it on and take it off. It's gonna be so easy. Oh yeah, the liquid metal is like spreading everywhere as I'm cleaning too. And like we can't have it outside anywhere because if it comes in contact with the PCB, that's bad news bears. Yeah, it looks like we can still clean a bit of this off, but for the most part, that is a lot of bonding that happened with the gallium and the copper. I should probably start with the SOC and clean this off so that way, I can take the tape off and get that ready, but this this is dangerous because I'm gonna have to make sure that the liquid metal doesn't spread anywhere else on the PCB. But it does look like a lot of it adhered to the actual 
heat sink, so there's not so much that I'm having to clean up here. But here, let's, I don't know if you can see that, but there's beads of liquid metal all around as I'm trying to clean it up, which just, this is a problem. This is the main thing that people are like, you shouldn't use liquid metal on a portable device as you're moving it around because you continuously increase the risk that the liquid metal is going to move and short out a component. So we are now going to be mitigating all of that with the frost sheet. Probably should have unplugged the battery while doing this. I would have made a lot of sense. Okay, it looks like I have quite a bit of it. I'm gonna peel off the tape now. We're gonna see if there was any spread underneath. So I can kind of see like at the top rim of the SOC, there's a little bit of liquid metal up there, but my, my electrical tape method worked well enough, I think. I just need to make sure I get every little piece of liquid metal out of here. I can, like you can't risk it. That looks like it's all off the SOC, which again, that was the top comments that were found on the liquid metal Steam Deck video. It was just, hey, <laughs> this is stupid, Brett. This is impractical, which yes, that's the point of the video that we were making. We wanna see what could the best thermal paste out there, which it's not really paste, but the best thermal compounds that you could put on it. What, what, what would happen? And yeah, I'm like, I'm scrubbing at this and it's, we're not getting any more clean on this heat sink right here. I don't think we're gonna get much more off of this. It is, it is caked in there, which I will keep reiterating, it was dumb for me to put liquid metal on the Steam Deck, but it was also fun. However, now we're here with the more practical solution, which is the graphene sheet. Do we, do we have gloves or do I, I'm just gonna have to freehand this, aren't I? Do you have rubber gloves? Maybe upstairs, let me go check. I do have gloves. Oh, I just broke it. They're size small though, which I got giganto hands. <laughs> Doctor. All right, so we have the graphene thermal pad and I just accidentally bent it and then tore it because this thing is fragile. But we actually, we can cut it to size to make sure that it just stays on the die, but we're, we're done with installation. That is how easy getting the frost sheet thermal pad is set up. You just have to place it down and you're good to go. Reinstall everything. But I'm gonna try to cut it a little bit to size so that there's no overhang. But again, it's not a problem like liquid metal where I had to painstakingly like fight it to make sure it was going where I needed it to. All right, we've got full coverage. I'm calling that good enough. Which, if you're purchasing your frost sheets, you can actually go on their website and make sure you're choosing the appropriate size. This was the smallest one that they have that we're using here, which is 25 by 25, but it goes all the way up to 38 by 38. And you can just refer to what CPU or GPU die you're putting on, what SOC, see what the size is, and cross-reference that, and then just make sure you're buying the appropriate size so you don't have to do hardly any replacement whatsoever. But we're good to just put the heat sink back on. Now that it's all clean, we clean the SOC, we clean the actual heat sink, and it should be time to see how thermals are gonna be. I mean, once we cleaned up the mess from my previous adventures, actually installing the frost sheet graphene pad was, I mean, that was what, 10 seconds of total time? You gonna turn on? Oh no. No! Don't be dead! Oh, there we go. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, no, the liquid metal got somewhere. I've put this Steam Deck through so much. I've replaced the screen on it. I've put liquid metal on it. I've put SSDs. I've put GPUs on it. This thing has gone through probably way more than a normal Steam Deck ever will. <laughs> so if we look at the previous temperatures that we had when we did the liquid metal conversion, the original Steam Deck that had nothing done to it ran at roughly 80 degrees Celsius and had 6,000 fan RPM. So that is what we're aiming to beat with this graphene pad. We're not aiming to beat the liquid metal because again, dangerous, best of the best, just really in a separate category. This is for everybody who actually wants a quieter Steam Deck and is okay tinkering and opening it up, but not okay with the enhanced inherent risk that comes with a lifetime use of liquid metal. So we need to beat 6,000 RPM at 80 degrees Celsius while we get the same game downloaded to make sure that we're actually showing off the same stuff. So we've got it booted up in God of War, which is where we did the testing on the previous Steam Deck, the original and then the liquid metal one. And what we can see here is that the temps are roughly the same as they were at stock with the thermal paste that Valve applies to the Steam Deck. But what we have here is much 
lower fan speeds, which means that the cooler has to work less hard in order to actually maintain that temperature. So we're sitting right now at roughly 5,000 to 5,100 RPM, whereas with the regular thermal pace that's on the Steam Deck from the factory has us running at 6,000 RPM. So nearly a thousand RPM difference, which definitely is noticeable when it comes to the fan noise that's coming out of the Steam Deck. And not only did it lower the fan speed by a thousand RPM, but it's also gonna last for over a year. You're not gonna dry out where you're gonna have to replace this. This is actually gonna last you, likely for the entire duration of the device. And if there's a Steam Deck too, you'll be able to swap it on over. And this was such a quick, easy fix in order to make with the Steam Deck. Opening it up, putting on the frost sheet graphene thermal pad in less than 10 seconds after I cleaned everything up, and we're off to the races. This is such an easy fix for you to make in case you wanna help fix your Steam Deck's cooling issues that come straight from the factory. But as mentioned, frost sheet does have different sizes that can accommodate different applications, whether you wanna put it on the latest AMD Ryzen 7000 processors or the upcoming Intel 13th gen, you should be able to do it with these. And again, the best part is super easy to install, very low risk for any sort of issues going wrong, and then they're reusable. This is something that as a tech YouTuber who's going to be reviewing hardware on the regular, I can take this graphene thermal pad, take it from one chip, to another or easily change out coolers and make it so that I don't have to go through a whole lot of effort in order to make sure that my test bench stays consistent. So this is great for anybody who's regularly swapping out hardware. It's also great for the Steam Deck. Like we're just letting it run and the, the fan's still not ramping up. That thing's been going for 15 minutes and it's still at a lower fan RPM than the Steam Deck originally was. It's good at cooling, it's easy to use, and it's gonna last a long time. So you can check them out at the link of the video description. Big thanks to Frost Sheet for sponsoring this video and for giving me a Steam Deck that now has no risk of me squishing out all of the liquid metal and potentially killing it. Appreciate it.